Have you ever been shopping for a car and found one that was just ultimately perfect spec, except for the color? So you can paint it, you can wrap it, but that's gonna be expensive. Or you can plastic dip it, but we already know how that could turn out. Nolan. This is the worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> So most of us do what's easy, and that's just live with the color that we got. But BMW engineers, they hate having to pick one color. So they did the unthinkable. They developed a car that could change color on the fly and even display images and complex shifting patterns. Oh, what? Could this be the future of automotive finishes? I don't know, we're gonna find out, let's go. Paintificus lifticus. Thank you to Keeps for sponsoring today's video. Hair loss has been eradicated on Earth, but in a universe where two out of three guys experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, we're on a mission to tackle universal hair loss. For we are Astro Keeps. Captain Maine, if we don't do something soon, this meteor will crash into that planet. I bet I could blow this rock up with one punch. Don't punch me. Oh, who said that? Me, the rock you threatened to punch. Easy, Hawk. The starship follicle respects all life, even destructive, out of control, sentient rock. Hey, I don't want to crash into that planet. I just don't know how to stop. 30 seconds to impact. Mr. Meteor, what you need is keeps. They make hair loss prevention easy by shipping your hair loss medication directly to your door at about half the cost of a traditional pharmacy. Now that rocks. <laughs> oh. It's working. Now quick, Mr. Meteor, use your new hair like a parachute. Wow. Thanks, Astro Keeps. You saved the day and helped me grow confidence. Scientifically speaking, you can't slow down with a parachute in space because there's no air to We're standing on a talking meteor and you want to debate logic? I'm a dang robot with a southern accent. Start your hair loss prevention today by going to keeps.com slash B2B or by clicking the link in the description to receive 50% off. And check back for another adventure of Astro Keeps. At CES in 2022, Las Vegas, BMW rolled out one of their iX electric SUVs and it looked pretty plain until the whole thing started changing colors like a kaleidoscope. Mm. You don't put a kaleidoscope over your eye, you put it over your mouth and taste it. <laughs> the BMW cycled through grayscale that ebbed and flowed as if it was breathing, then started throwing up triangles and all sorts of designs. This was an entirely customizable car surface where you could theoretically put memes, NFTs, even your Instagram handle on, or sexy logo like this. So what kind of alien wizardry is this? Well, it's not based on heat like those hyper color t-shirts you wore in elementary school. And it's not trick of the light like color changing chromatic paint. What BMW did is in fact take another decades old technology and make it amazing. Back in the 1970s, researchers at Xerox were messing around with the idea of a low power paper-like display that could be used for portable reading material. Something like a newspaper that would scroll through stories with no interruptions. Does that sound familiar? Uh, iPad. <laughs> they never realized those dreams though because it was the 70s and a computer was bigger than your car. Books and magazines were still a whole lot easier than hauling around an 85 pound monitor just to do a little reading on the toilet. But two decades later, a couple of smart guys at MIT picked up where Xerox left off and made the electronic paper display a reality. Unfortunately, it was still pretty much unusable because well, it was the 90s and computers were still here. But those MIT mathletes didn't give up. They refined it and wound up going super small. Small enough you could carry it in your hand. And that was that. They called the patent office and everyone got rich. E-Ink was born. But to see how this technology made the leap from Kindle to car, first we need to see how this E-Ink actually works. So those engineers back in the 90s already had the idea of how to make E-Ink. They just didn't have the advanced machinery we do now to pull it off. Originally, they envisioned a ball with a sphere inside that was half white, half black. But back then, they couldn't build that little tiny microsphere. 
So they shelved the idea for a while, and later, smarter engineers with tinier fingers built micro capsules that were the size of human hairs, and they filled them with lots of super tiny black and white micro particles that were suspended in a fluid that they would allow electricity to easily pass through. The black particles were positively charged and the white ones were negatively charged. They laid all those tiny hair-sized capsules in a row and applied a film over them, which is a screen. By running an electrical charge across the bottom of the microcapsules, they could control where the particles were. So if they ran a positive charge, the black microparticles would be repelled and they would jump to the top of the capsule, making the surface appear black. And if they used a negative charge, the white ones would move to the top and make it appear white. Now the benefit of using the microcapsules instead of the original spheres is that you can produce shades of gray with a mixed negative and positive charge that splits up the black and white particles. And by using tons of little black and white capsules that basically makes a pixel which can be used to create larger graphics and designs. In an e-ink display, no backlight is necessary. Ambient light from the environment is reflected from the surface of the display back to your eyeball. The more ambient light, the brighter the display looks, and it does all that with no glare so you can look at your e-reader on the beach with no issues. To be honest, I, I e-read a lot, but I do it in the pool. And I wear this hot bathing suit. One of the biggest advantages of e-ink though is just how little power it uses. Aside from the initial charge to charge the design, it uses zero power. You zap the little black and white microparticles and they run off to their separate sides to make a graphic. And that's it, they're stuck there and they're not gonna move until you zap them again and change the design. This is why Kindles and other e-readers can run for weeks between charges. Also, when the battery runs down, there's actually still a display there. I've done that a few times. This glare-free super display is manufactured into a film, then integrated into all kinds of electronics like phones, watches, e-readers, and a lot more. Now, the first phone to make use of this tech was a Motorola, which boasted days of runtime due to the low power consumption of the e-ink display. Okay, but that's nothing new. Kindles have been around for years. It's easy to program a display to work on a flat surface. You tell your flat display you want a picture of a duck, and then you got a freaking duck right there for your eye holes to see. Yeah, but what if it's three-dimensional? If you want to e-ink the globe, it gets a bit more complicated. No matter what your uncle says, the Earth isn't flat. So you can't just send a flat image to the globe e-ink display and expect it to show right up. Oh no. So have you ever seen those maps of the Earth that properly represent the size and location of the continents and it's all up and down in weird shape? Well, that's because when you flatten out a three-dimensional object, it just doesn't look the same anymore due to surface areas, topography, and all that kind of stuff. I guess that's why I'm not a map guy. I'm not a cartographer. I'm not Lewis and Clark. I'm not Sacagawea, obviously. I'm not Napoleon. And the same goes for a 2022 BMW iX. If you were to skin the body of an iX and lay it out flat, it wouldn't look like an iX anymore. It would look like a giant misshapen rectangle. So you can't just send your duck picture to a 3D object. You have to create an algorithm that will interpret the image of the duck so that all its duck bits show up in the correct spots. Otherwise, your duck's gonna look like a big old piece of cubist art. And I'm not a fan of Picasso, unless it's Pablo. <laughs> when you're creating an e-ink display in the shape of a BMW iX, you're not actually just laying the e-ink film over the top of the car and calling it a day. You're actually creating algorithms in the shape of a BMW e-ink to manage the displays. And that is the hard part. E-ink is superior to any old paint job in every single way, even if it's better than metallic plum crazy purple. We already talked about how e-ink doesn't use any power, but it can actually save power. So on blistering hot days, you can switch the car to be entirely white to reflect as much light as possible and reduce the strain on the cooling system. And when it's freezing out, you flip it to the dark side and absorb as much heat as possible to heat up the interior more quickly. But what if it's April 25th, Jeremiah day, <laughs> and it's not too hot, but it's not too cold. And you need a light jacket. Well, forget about the climate for a minute and start thinking about more useful things. What if instead of a dinky little turn signal, the whole frickin' left side of your car blinked when you wanted to merge? What if the car would quickly cycle through black and white when your battery was low as an indicator? Also letting all your other friends know your battery's low. What if you got off your plane after a week of partying at Ibiza and you forgot to take a picture of where you parked your car? Or you hit the park mode and your paint job just friggin' like a disco ball trying to catch your hungover eye? And that is the whole point. It is totally customizable. You can put any design you can imagine on the surface of your car. Are you feeling like a zebra? Well, f slap them yeah. stripes on. What about a cheetah? Give me the polka dots, Mr. Bot. Did some guy cut you off? 
literally give him a finger. Put the finger on your car right on the side. You're only limited by your imagination. And even then you'll probably be able to download custom designs from other people online. But just like everything, there are some compromises. It's not all fun and games. Now I just wanna say, if you've made it this far, I apologize. But e-ink for a car doesn't really exist yet. What? Yeah, yeah, they made that one, but it's just a concept. The reality is, is that there's no way they could release this right now to you and me. Okay, first there are some limits. If you have an e-reader and have accidentally pulled up some images, they're soft and a bit grainy and kind of stuck like a uh, image in the 90s. And the second, there is color, but it isn't that great. E-ink color is basically an RGB matrix. So if you want to splash a green across your hood, it will have to mix in a bunch of yellow and blue microcapsules together with different chargers, and that will never be as precise as an OLED display. Also, it's pretty cool that they skinned a Beamer with e-ink, but they'll never ever park that sucker outside. E-ink is super fragile. A scratch, a fender, or even an angry X will cost you thousands and thousands of dollars to get your customizable paint job working again because simple damage can create an all over glitching look to any e-ink display. There's also the weather to account for. Even with a very solid protective clear coat, any single weather event could render your e-ink whip totally unreadable. <laughs> Two thumbs down or brown. Many concept cars never leave the brains of the engineers who cobble them together, but some make it to auto shows where people drool all over them. If e-ink catches on at all, it's going to be a very long time before we see it out there in the road due to its sheer volume of hurdles to hurdle. But that's what concepts are all about. We may not see a full e-ink covered car, but we may see e-ink trim pieces that can indicate turns or tell other drivers, freaking read between the lines. Either way though, the future is gonna be customizable. We're into skins and NFTs and your car's gonna be one of those, man. I'm gonna, I got my own NFT. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> Last night I had a dream where I was on this ranch. There are horses everywhere. Not just regular horses. Big, beautiful, sturdy buff horses place. It's called Buff Horse Ranch. Now, unfortunately, that was just a dream. But these shirts we made are 100% real and 100% cotton. Available now at donutmedia.com. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. Follow us here on Donut at Donut Media. Follow me at Jeremiah Burton. There's a dog right here. Hey, bubby. Can I lift you up? He says, nah, man. Also, leave a comment below and let me know if I keep the mustache or, or, or shave it. Well, you already decided. I shaved it. No, I know that, Max. <laughs> I know, I'm just saying I can regrow it, though. Can you? Oh, yeah, man. It just takes me about six months. Like e-ink. <laughs> yeah, it's like e-ink. Uh, thank you, I love you. Bye for now. Yeah, 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 okay. But first, we need to see how this e-ink actually works. Electronic ink. <laughs> it's like a digital squid. Electronic <laughs> <laughs> uh, ink. It's electronic ink. Electronic ink.